Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. Have you ever fabricated the truth? Okay, so let me ask another way. <laughs> have you ever bent what you really should have been saying in a way that wasn't exactly what the truth should have been? Let me ask it another way. Have, have you ever wanted to tell the absolute truth about something, but you just couldn't do it? Have you, have you in your entire life ever told a fib? Then my message is going to be perfect for you because the title of my message is this. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Pass those out. Liar, liar, pants on fire. They shall know the what? The what? And the what will set them free. The truth will set them free. Look at somebody beside of you and say, the truth will set you free. For all of you parents that have kids in here this morning, um, this is our fifth Sunday. Every fifth Sunday, we allow all of our children's church workers and our kids' church workers um, to come in here with us on a Sunday morning, and we keep our, all of our kids in here. So parents, thank you for letting your kids stay in here with us this morning, and thank you to all of our kids' church workers and our children's church workers and our nursery workers that help us so much through the year minister to our children. Last week, Erica had let Abby stay in, in big church. Is Abby out, out of kids' church now? Okay, Abby's grown out of kids' church, and she told her mom, she asked her mom, she said, or, or Erica said, Abby, how did you like being in kids' church, uh, in big church instead of kids' church? Because she's aged out of kids' church. She said, oh, mom, I really liked it. I really liked it. She said, and, and poppy was funny. Something that, she said, my poppy was funny. And so, and she said, and really, she said, mom, she said, I've, I've kind of known all, all the little stories that, that they've done in, in kids' church. She said, like, I know that Moses built the ark. <laughs> Erica was like, maybe we need to send you back for one more week. And then she started laughing. Nah, I know, Mom. I'm just kidding. Um, liar, liar, pants on fire. Where am I going with this? The bottom line is, at one time or another, we're all big fat liars. At one time or another, we all are. I ran across this article, and it had, the title of this article was this. It said, 60% of people can't go 10 minutes without lying. 60% of people can't go 10 minutes without lying. And one quote out of the article was, was this. Look at this quote. It said, there are two things you can say for sure about human, being, human beings. One, our opposable thumbs make us great at using tools. And we're all big fat liars. In fact, by age four, 90% of our children have grasped the concept of lying. And it just gets worse by there. According to the book, The Day America Told the Truth, we're a nation of liars. You can watch that on the news. I'm never in my life. We won't go any farther than that. Statistics show that 80% of children lie regularly to their parents. 75% of people lie to their friends. 73% lie to their siblings, 69% lie to their spouses, 
43% lie about their jobs. In a world where everyone lies, God is calling his people to tell the truth. To tell the truth. Now I want you to stay with me this morning. Because I feel like that all of us need to hear this message this morning. Psalm 12, 12 says this. Everybody lies to his neighbor. Their flattering lips speak with deception. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. And then it begins, a lying tongue, a false witness who pours out lies. Things that God hates that the Bible says are detestable to him. And one of them is a liar. Ephesians 4.25 says, therefore each of you must put off what? Put off falsehood. A truthful witness does not deceive. Proverbs 14.5 says, I'm sorry. A truthful witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. And Ephesians 4.25 says, therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. Colossians 3.9 says, don't lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices. He's saying the new man doesn't lie anymore. And then Revelation 21.8 kind of sums it up. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual, um, sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. That's pretty plain, isn't it? Those verses are pretty plain. I did not make those up. That, that's not something that I conjured up. Because the truth matters to God, it should matter to us too. And as Christian people, more than any other people, we should speak the truth. But that's not always the case. And then here's my scripture for this morning. And it comes from James and the 5th chapter and the 12th verse. And I'm going to stay in this scripture the whole day. So if you want to take this scripture and, and, and turn to it this morning, I'll have some other things. But this is where I'm going to use most everything out. This is what James says. Above all. Everybody say above all. Above all. My brothers. Say my brothers. my brothers. Say do not swear. Do not, swear. not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. And then read this with me. Let your yes be yes. Your no, no. Or, that's a tough verse, isn't it, Viv? Above all, my brothers, don't swear. Don't swear by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Or, you'll be condemned. But it's just a little white lie, Pastor. Now, on one level, this verse looks like a prohibition against swearing. Like you shouldn't swear. Well, I swear. But it's actually way more than that. And this verse has five different elements that I believe that we're going to pull out this morning. One, it has crucial importance. The very first thing. This verse has crucial importance. And what is it? It's the very first line of that verse. Everybody say above all. Above all. James is saying, above anything else. Above anything else, we need to let our yes be yes and our no be no. In, 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 J, in the book of James, there's 50 commands in the five chapters of the book of James. This is the only one in the entire chapter that James stipulates above all. There's 50 other different things that he talks about if you read the book of James. But this is the one thing that he says, above all else, you need to do this. Why? Because lying in our society today has almost become a non-issue. I heard somebody say, you can't help a liar. You can help anyone struggling with any sort of sin as long as they tell the truth. But you can't help a liar because you can't trust anything that they say. Maybe that's why James started that verse with, above all. Above all. Because without truthful speech, you cannot trust anything that somebody says. 
So above all, next word in the, in, in the verse, it has a divine origin. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? He says, above all, brothers, above all, my brothers. Now, sometimes we, we read across the word, well, hey, brother, brothers. But in this one, this is, in, in this verse in particular, this is not a throwaway word. Because when James is speaking above all, brothers, he's speaking to all of us. And, and the word in the Greek talks about being born from the same womb. Above all, my brothers who are of kindred spirit with me. And I have one brother. His name is Byron. He's my brother because Ken Pritchard and Lillian Pritchard are my mother and my father. My brother and I were born of the same womb. That's us. That's all of us in the house this morning. We are born again by the same womb as brothers and sisters. In God's family, we are all born from the same spiritual womb. We're together. Look at somebody and say, I'm with you whether you like it or not. I am born again with you. Now, now, now th this womb that we're talking about, it extends further than, than achievement, than your race, than your eth ethnic background, than your money, than your education, than your talent, than your, your language, than your culture, your age, your sex. Whether you're a Republican or whether you're a Democrat, God help us. Or any other barriers that divide. I wish, can I just pause for a second? I wish we could start in our election process all over and say you can't run for office if you are a Republican or a Democrat. You got to come in and be something totally different because them two jokers just cannot get along. I mean they just can't. I mean, they're the two most dominant political parties in our country, and they are 50-50 divided on either side. There's no wonder we're in the mess that we're in. Born from the same womb. That means that we're not divided into two different groups. We're all from the same spiritual womb. John 14, 6 declares this. I am the truth. Say that. I am the truth. And then in John 17, 17, he says, your word is truth. And then later on, when he was before Pontius Pilate, Pilate was talking to him, and Jesus said, I came into the world to bear witness to the what? The truth. The truth. And everyone, which is all of us, everyone who stands on the side of truth listens to me. If we're born of the same womb, and we are with the same spiritual womb, then the truth should excite us. Because Jesus himself came into the world to bear witness of the truth. And everyone who is on the side of the truth bears witness to him. Look at somebody and say, I like the truth. So I want to ask you something. Are you on the side of truth this morning? Do you speak the truth? If you claim to know Jesus, who is the truth, and if you claim to believe the word, which Jesus said is the truth, then shouldn't you speak the truth? But I can tell you this, in a world full of lies, and we see them every day, if no one else speaks the truth, Christians should speak the truth. We should speak the truth, Gary. So the word brothers, above all, brothers, that's the implication that, J that James is talking about. Now, the limitations that he's talking about, it has specific limitation. Then he says this, don't swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Now we come to the heart of this verse. Now, let me get one thing kind of out of the way first. When James uses the word swear, he's not truly talking about curse words or sexual suggestive language. Years ago, daddy was at the altar. 
He was standing here at the altar, and you know, we, we, I was like, Daddy wore his mic right here. He don't like this thing too good. He likes the one on his shirt collar, or on his shirt. And this little girl came down the aisle, and Daddy came down here with her like this right here. And he bent down, and, he, and normally, if somebody comes to the altar, we'll, so we can talk to them, and then we cut our mic back on. We'll do it back and forth. So Daddy leaned over to this little girl, and she was about, what, 11, 10 or 11, maybe not even that old. Daddy leaned over to her and he said, what do you want me to pray for, honey? She said, for cussing? <laughs> for cussing? But James is not truly talking about cussing. You can find that in Ephesians 4, 29 and 31 if you want to look that up. And you can also find it in Ephesians 5, 3 and 4. Now, believe me. Foul speech, curse words is ug are ugly and they're unbecoming for Christians. Can you say amen? amen? But that's not exactly what James is talking about in this verse. James is thinking about swearing in the sense of making an oath that is guaranteed to be the truth about something. Do you swear to tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Now, now the Jews, now listen to this. Let me, let me give you a little bit of backstory. The Jews were proficient in making oaths for all kind of occasions. And so they would constantly make an oath on the things that they were doing. But sometimes they used God's name to make ridiculous promises that they couldn't even keep. In Leviticus 19.12, he even, the Bible says, Don't bring shame on, the, on your God by using it to swear falsely. Because I am the Lord. Falsely, the Jews would make promises to do this or that, but in many cases, they never really intended their promise. They were just using God's name as a cover for their own deceitfulness. Now, you with me? Stay with me now. I'm, I'm building a case. Because they figured that a lie told in God's name is worse because now you've dragged the name of the Lord in the mud with your story. Now, now, is James, in this verse, is he prohibiting oath-taking like a witness taking a stand? Now, some Christians believe that, yes, you should never put your hand on the Bible and say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I, I don't, I, and again, I still don't believe that's exactly what James has in mind with this. And I don't have a, I don't have a problem if, you, if, if that's your conscience and you would rather not put your hand on the Bible and swear. I get it. But the real issue in this verse that I'm trying to portray this morning is how careless we've come with the truth. That's what I'm talking about this morning. It's almost that we, that we assume that nobody tells the truth. That's why, that, that's why when you get ready to tell somebody something, you say, hey man, this, 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 and I swear on my mama's grave. What does your mama have to do with you telling the truth? I, 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 if you said, I guess it means, well, if I swear on my mama's grave or I, I swear on my child's life that I'm telling you the truth. Or I swear to God. I swear by all that's holy. I swear on a stack of Bibles. Cross my heart and hope to die. As God is my witness. Or here's a harmless one. Pinky swear. <laughs> All intended on the person not believing that you're telling the truth to them anyway. That you have to add something else onto the backside of what you're telling them because we become a nation of liars. That's where I'm at this morning. In the Jewish culture, they would do three things. You would make a promise, you would invoke God as a witness, and then you would make a declaration that God would punish you if you failed to make your promise. They were pulling the name of the Lord into all those things. It made it serious. And so to get around that, Jews developed a way of swearing that wouldn't involve God's name. They would swear to heaven or swear to earth or by the throne of God 
or by the hair on their head. They wanted to make a promise that they had no intention of keeping, but they did not want to involve God's name in their swear. So they would connect it to something that was less than God's name. They were lying while pretending to tell the truth. They used swearing back and forth as an approved way to lie to one another. Let me tell you, God takes your words seriously. Our men have been studying for a long time. There's life and death in what, men? Power of the tongue. Maybe you remember the little children's course. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little tongue, what you say. That's exactly what James is talking about. Don't promise to tell the truth. Don't swear to tell the truth. Just simply tell the truth. There's even a show on TV called what? To Tell the Truth. And they are all liar, liar, pants on fire. Believe me, I'm never good at that show. I'm horrible at it. Lying is just a slippery slope. One lie leads to another and then there's just no end. How many of you can say amen to that? Remember Peter in the courtyard? When the little girl came, aren't you... Weren't you one of the ones that was with Jesus? No. I don't know who he was. Yes, you were. Sue Live and Good. <laughs> Weren't you with Jesus? The Nazarene. We, we did the promise years ago, and I was Peter. And Sue was one of the onlookers that said, Say it, Sue. And I would say, I don't know the man. I don't know him. And then the next thing that happened was, ur, 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 and the rooster would crow. In the end, he had to enforce his actions, his lie. He had to go over and over and over. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know. I tell you, I don't know the man. Let me give you one little, little nugget this morning. You don't have to remember your lies when you tell the truth. You can take that to the bank right there, Patrick. Okay, the next thing. It has a clear example. Above all, brothers, don't swear. Don't swear that you, don't, don't make yourself be in a place where that you swear that you are telling the truth. Then the next thing, James says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you mean to say yes, then say what? Yes. If you mean to say no, say what? No. Teenagers. That does not involve the word whatever. Let me just tell you this. You can ask my daughter and my son if they wanted their mouth mashed faster than anything else in my house. It was to look at me or their mother and go, whatever. Whatever is a non-committal answer that means that you're saying the exact th same thing to your parents is, I don't care. You're looking at your parents and you're going, I don't care. I don't have a feeling for you or my father, so whatever. You need to rip it out of your vocabulary. You need to take that word and throw it away. And parents, you need to not allow your kids to say that and use it against you. And you shouldn't use it with them. Well, whatever. You just do what you want to. You're going to anyway. And that's okay when it's talking about getting an extra glass of milk. But when it's talking about going to the liquor store, you wish you had all those whatevers back. No whatever. Let your yes be yes. You hear me, Jabin? 
You listen? You better. <laughs> Let your no be no. No whatever. You good? It's a good boy. We've, we have gone so far in allowing people to guess what we mean. We've come to be the passive, aggressive, him hawing fake promises or promises with a thousand conditions or maybe this or maybe that or maybe the, the studied indecision that takes forever to come to some kind of conclusion and then it hedges by trying to say no and trying to say yes at the same time. Could you come to the church Saturday morning and help us clean up? Well, brother, I don't know if I could or, or not. Uh, my wife has got some things around the house that she wants me to do. And I feel like I should maybe be at, at the house with her because I love being at the house and doing things that she asked me to. And, and I, you're going, do you lie all the time or just when your neck's moving? I mean, I, I don't know. And they're trying to, in a kind way, just tell me no. I cannot be there. I can't do it. And again, what's the point of all this? Tell the truth. The truth will set you free. It might hurt a little. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Isn't that in a song? Here's you another truth. Here's you another truth this morning. It's okay to say no. It'd be way better for you just to tell me no than to lie to me and tell me that you would love to be at the house with your wife doing stuff. Sometimes the smartest thing to do is just say no. But instead, we make excuses. We shuffle our feet. We do our head all kind of crazy. And then if we do say no, we immediately begin to apologize. No, I can't. Man, I'm so sorry I can't. No, you're not. Just tell the truth. And the thing about it, all of us, we've bought into the fake news. We've bought into the shaded truth. We've bought into the lies that where we expect people to tell us. We watch it over and over and over and over. That's why I'm here to say today, just tell the truth. Tell the truth. God wants us to become men and women who tell the truth. We, we, we fudge so much on what the truth is that even when I'm trying to tell Patrick something I, and I'm trying to, get, I have to just go, hey man, let me be honest with you about something. Why do I have to, press, to preface what I'm fixing to tell him by going ahead and saying, Patrick, I need to be honest with you about something. I do not like the way you comb your hair. Why do I have to preface it? Because we've become that way. We've become a society who don't tell the truth. The standard is simple. Tell the truth every time. Let your lips speak the truth and not falsehood. No lies, no fat flattery, no white lies, no clever excuses, no misleading expectation, uh, explanations. Let your lips speak the truth. Okay, let's look at everything that James has said so far. He said, above all, brothers, don't swear. You don't have to go before it and say, hey, let me tell you the truth about something. You don't have to put a swear in front of it. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. He could have stopped there. But he didn't, Claude. Guess what the next thing he said? He gave us a warning, a concise warning. And he said, you'll be condemned. You'll be condemned. Now, think about this. Remember in the first part of the verse? The first part of the verse said what? Above all. And the next word in, in the verse was what? Brothers. So who's James writing to? Yes. 
He's writing to the people from the same womb. He's not writing this to the world. He's writing it to us, the brethren. And he's saying, above all, my brothers, if you don't let your yes be yes and your no be no, you're going to be condemned. Us, the brothers, not the pagans. It's a warning for people like you and me that when we lie, we face the judgment of the Lord. Someday we have to make an account for every idle word we've ever spoken. And either by our words we're going to be justified or by our words we're going to be condemned. In a world that's given over to lies and deceit and dishonesty, the honest man or the woman will stand out in the crowd. The honest man and the honest woman. So God bless those people whose word is their bond, whose promises mean something, whose yes means yes, and whose no means no. And it matters because in Titus 1, 2, and in Hebrews 6, 6, 18, it says, we serve a God who cannot what? Lie. Lying is not a part of his personality. Jesus said, I am the truth. Your word is truth. I have come to bring the truth. It's, for, it's a time for every single one of us, by the grace of God, say, by God's grace, I will be a person of truth. With God's help, I will live with integrity so that others can trust what I say. Will you say that with me? By God's grace, I will be a person of truth. And with God's help, I will live with integrity so that others can trust what I say. Man, that should be a refrigerator verse forever. James says this in, verse, in chapter 3 and verse 2. We all may stumble in many ways. We're all going to stumble in many ways. We've all fallen short in this area. We've all made promises we can't keep. We've all lied under pressure. We've all said things that weren't true. We've all fudged the truth. We've all told white lies. How many of you fish? Liar, liar, pants on fire. Caught one. How big? Seriously? Uh huh. How far did you zoom in on your phone to make it look that big? We've played with loose ends and loose facts, and we've done it again and again. Psalm 116, 11, the psalmist said, all men are liars. And every one of us, whether we like it or not, we're condemned by our own deceit. If God is requiring honesty, then who's, who will ever stand in the presence of the Lord? There's only one man that would qualify, and his name was Jesus. He's the only one that ever lived and the only one who never lied or stretched the truth and never deceived. And that's why all of us need Jesus. We need the truth. Why do you think when, when Jesus was here and he said, I am the what? Way. I am I'm the way. I am the truth. And I'm the life. I'm the truth. So if we need Jesus to be our way maker... We surely need him to help us be the truth. And we need him to be life to us. Your hope and your life rest in the cross of the Lord Jesus. Maybe this morning you're in a place where that the very first thing when I said in my message that my title was Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. You thought, man, this is going to hit me hard. I, I, I don't even deserve, I don't deserve a Savior like Jesus because of the things that I've said and done. John 1.14 says, Jesus came to the earth full of grace and full of truth. And I'm going to close with this. To know Jesus is to know the truth. To know Jesus is to know the truth. To follow Jesus is to follow the truth. To believe Jesus is to believe the truth. And to love Jesus is to love the truth. 
To know Jesus is to know the truth. To follow Jesus is to follow the truth. To believe in Jesus is to believe the truth. And to love Jesus is to love the truth. Can you say amen? amen. We know the truth. We've believed the truth. We're standing in the truth. We have committed ourselves to following the one who is the truth. So therefore, let us become people of the truth. Let us become people of the truth. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we know that your word is soothing. We know that your word is, is comfort. We know that your word is joy. Sometimes, Lord, your word is sharp and it's powerful and it cuts like a two-edged sword. There may be somebody here this morning that says, Pastor, I'm struggling. I've gotten to a place in my life where I can't even tell the truth about myself anymore. I have told so many lies and fabricated so many stories that I don't even know who I am anymore. I need the peace speaker. I need the truth talker and the truth walker. I need to know that Jesus still cares for me because I've really made a mess of myself. Good news for you this morning. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the truth is that Jesus Christ loves you just like you are. That he loves you no matter what you've been going through or are going through or will go through. He loves you the same. And He doesn't love you because you're good. He loves you because He's good. So if this morning you feel unloved or you feel like, Pastor, I have just gone too far. I want you to raise up your hand this morning and say, Pastor, just pray for me this morning. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Amen. Amen. I'm struggling, Pastor. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time even identifying who I am anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for every hand that's up this morning. Thank you, Father. Lord, we know that there's a true enemy, and his name is Satan. And he's the father of all lies. But, Lord, we thank you that the truth is here this morning, that Jesus Christ, the way and the truth and the life is in this place today. So, Father, for everyone that raised their hand this morning, for everyone that said, I don't even know who I am, I'm struggling, Pastor. For every one of those, Father, I ask that you would come to them right now and wrap your loving arms around them and embrace them in a love bath like they've never felt before as a Savior and as a Lord and as the Father of truth. Lord Jesus, bless everyone in this house today and bless everyone that has listened today on the Internet that, Lord Jesus, truly the truth would set us free. Father, by your grace and by your mercy and by your wisdom Lord come and fill us with your power until the truth will drive out all of the falsehood in our life Lord we speak truth we speak life to everyone in this house today and we thank you Lord by the grace and the love of the Lord Jesus that we live and we move and we have our being in this place today would you just grab somebody's hand beside of you if you don't know them that well maybe just reach over and put your hand against them I want you to just look at them you can, you can hold your head up just tell somebody that Jesus loves you and that's the truth now look let me tell you where you're at now stop right there don't say nothing else you'll mess it up just spoken your first truth old things are passed away and behold all things have become new so what you've just done in an act of faith in an act of obedience you have spoken a truth to that one beside of you let your yea be yea and your no be no Jesus loves you that's a truth so now what I want you to work on, it's 
All right? Wait, wait till my clock flips over to 12.02. Hold on. All right, you have 15 seconds, and I want you to tell the person beside of you something that is the truth, whatever it is. Anything you want to tell them. Okay, stop. Now, the rest of this day is up to you. You've made it for almost 30 seconds telling the truth. Right? Now, some of you had to think about it to tell the truth. But you didn't preface it by going, hey man, let me tell you the truth about something. See what I mean? It's changing our stinking thinking. It's changing our thought process, and it's standing in the place to where we tell the truth. Patrick Breeden, I love you, my friend. And I thank you that you are an armor bearer to me. And I like the way you comb your hair. <laughs> Serious? Okay, cool. He said, and I like the way you comb your hair. You're dismissed. See ya. <laughs>